Hello, this video is for all the plumbing, heating, engineering folks like myself who are likely to be working on this new Valiant Ecotec boiler because I wanted to tell you about this really useful menu and I didn't realize you could also access it from the chimney sweep mode because it's kind of hidden or it's not obvious that it's there. So I wanted to show you this menu because like I said, it is really, really useful. I'm also going to run through that installer level and those menus and importantly that QR code. Now I found that Valiant Technical to find out a little bit more about these QR codes and apparently they're going to play a much bigger part in our future and they're going to be adding more QR codes all the time. So make sure you stick around for that because I think it's really important that we know about this, especially if you're an engineer like myself who is replacing parts. Right, so I'm just going to jump straight into it. But before I do, I just want to quickly remind you that down in the description, I've got lots of other help videos, including the one about the insulation on the back of the boiler when you come to hang it. It can be a bit of an issue and what I've done to overcome that. So make sure you check those out. Right, now let's get on with these menus. So here I am on the standby screen and I'm going to press the menu button to light up all the buttons. And then we have the chimney sweep mode. So I'm going to press on that to go into chimney sweep mode. At the top there, we have adjustable heat load, so we can adjust the power that the boiler runs at. We got our maximum, which is for hot water. And then we got minimum load, where I can set the boiler to run at its lowest possible power rating. Now the screen briefly changes and we have the temperature on the screen. We can see we're in chimney sweep mode. We can see that it says minimum output 4.2 kilowatts and program starting. And then it changes again. It's showing us S59. It then changes back again and shows us the time remaining before it changes to this screen where it says S93. Now for me and the last three boilers, this S93, it just stays on the screen, telling me this in chimney sweep mode. And I was looking at this and thinking, well, this isn't very good. I got no idea what the boiler is running at. What temperature is it at? And that's when I noticed that the question mark was also lit up along with the back arrow for cancel. Also the chimney sweep button, which is actually a slightly yellow color and not the white that you can see here. So I then press that question mark to see what would happen. And then it takes you to this other menu, which is really, really super useful. And they've called it data overview. And you can see as I'm scrolling down the screen, it tells you everything that the boiler is doing. We've got our flow temperature. We've got our actual return temperature. We've got the temperature that the hot water is set to and the actual temperature that the hot water is running at. It tells you the actual flow rate in liters. So like I said, this is a really useful menu. It's going to be super useful when it comes to diagnosing faults because of all the information that it's given you. And it could also help when doing a logbook if you want to get those numbers exactly right. I'm going to demonstrate that hot water in action. So I'm just going to scroll down to domestic hot water. And there we go, look, the liters per minute. And now you can see I've got the tap on. It's telling me exactly how many liters per minute is being used. And if I scroll down to three port valve position, you can see it's in heating right now, but it's going to change to hot water. And there we go, hot water. So we now know that the valve is in this hot water position, or it certainly should be. So I hope you agree. This is a really useful little menu. Then I was thinking, well, it'd be really useful if you could find this somewhere else on the boiler. You don't have to be in chimney sweep mode. Now I had actually seen the menu before when I'd made the other videos when I first installed one of these boilers, but I didn't pay much attention to it. It is pretty obvious where it can be found, but I'll show you where that is anyway. So let's just back out that chimney sweep mode. So I'm going to press back button, go back to this menu then press back again and press back again. And now I'm going to press menu and then press menu again. Then I'm going to scroll down to settings and press the tick. Then we go down to install a level, press tick again. We put in our access code, press the tick. And then the first line that we can see is data overview. So you can't really miss it. Press the tick to enter into the data overview. And there we go. We've got all the information about the boiler all in one place. So for instance, if you're balancing the system and you want to know what the return temperature is, there it is right there, actual return temperature. So you no longer need to go into the decodes to see that, which would have been D41. And just so you know, D40 would have been the actual flow temperature. 
So like I keep saying, this is a really useful little menu. I kind of overlooked it in the first place, but hopefully you can see that it is actually quite a useful little menu. And also when you're doing that commissioning and you go into that chimney sweep mode, you can press that little question mark button. You'll then be able to see exactly what the boiler is doing. Now, just in case you haven't watched any of my other videos, I thought I'd just run through the installer level. Now, I've just scrolled down to installer assistant, and I've also noticed that we've got the question mark lit up just there. So watch out for that question mark when you're scrolling through these menus. Now, as you will know, when we first turn the boiler on, the installer assistant comes up. But if you've got anything wrong or you want to change anything, you can run it again from here. Just before I get on that QR code, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is Mark Ballard. I've been a gas registered engineer for nearly 30 years. I make help videos to help you. If you found this video helpful, then please give me that little bit of feedback by clicking on that thumbs up. You can click on subscribe, ring on the bell to get a notification, and of course, share it with your friends. Oh, and don't forget, you can check out my website where I've categorized all my videos. And there's always my toolbox fund if you want to get me a cup of coffee, because that is always appreciated. So the QR codes. So like I said in my introduction, I phoned the Valiant Technical Department to find out exactly what this QR code does. You can see the question mark came up and it's given us this little paragraph. And importantly here, it's telling us to use the service apps QR scanner. So you have to use a Valiant's app to scan these QR codes. If you just use a normal scanner, you just get a whole load of gobbledygook like this. So you do need the app. So to get the app, we just go to the Play Store. You just type in Valiant app. And at the bottom, you can see it says My Valiant Pro. I've already installed it, so I just open it. I'm now in the app. At the bottom of the screen, you can select Scan and then select On-Site Diagnosis. This menu pops up and I just select while using the app. Now I just scan that QR code and there we go. That was really fast. And there we are. Look, there's all the information about the boiler. Now, to be perfectly honest, this is the first time that I've seen this app or used it, but scanning through it very quickly, I can see there is some really useful information in it. Now, I'm not sure whether this is a snapshot or if it's actually live monitoring, but obviously it says monitoring there and you can scroll on down or it says system monitoring and we can actually select that and see the details. And there we go. There's some more information there. Let's just back out of that. Now, here's another really useful part. If you scroll down to the bottom, we've got the spare parts catalog. Click on that. We're then taken through to this menu. We can then scroll up and down to look at the various drawings for the boiler. And then we can pick one of them and then select a part which we might need. So we've got all the part numbers in here. So I'm just going to select the gas valve. If we press and we hold that, we can actually add it to our cart. And all that does, it just adds it to a shopping list. So then we can then click on the part and look, and it shows us exactly what part it is on the drawing. So we know that we're getting the right bits. Using this app now, I'm thinking it's got to speed it up when it comes to ordering parts for the boiler that you're working on. And just as importantly, it should actually be the right part. Now I thought I'd just show you that shopping list quickly. So if you just click on the menu, you then got the shopping list and then you can click on that. Then you can see what's in your basket and then call your supplier and get those parts ordered. Now the very technical man, he told me that we should be able to use this scanner to scan the actual parts. Because if we look at the parts on the border, they've now got these QR codes on and it should give us some additional information like the offset the gas valve should be set to. But when I tried doing that on the boiler, it didn't work. Hopefully that's something that they are working on and we'll be able to do this in the future because again, that would be really useful. But you can see for me at the moment, it's just not working or maybe I'm doing it wrong. Let us all know in the comments if you tried this and it worked for you. Now I'm sure there's already folks out there who are using this app. If you are, then again, let us know what you think of it, because going through it, I can see there's a whole load more information that can be used in this app. And I think I definitely recommend downloading it and try playing around with it. There's so much in it. I feel there's a whole nother video needed to explain how it all works and how you can get the best out of it. So watch out for that video. Right now, let's move on. Here is installer contact information. You definitely want to change that if you want your customer to contact you and not Valiant. Because if a fault code comes up on the boiler, it will also show your contact information, which may be Valiant and you don't want them calling Valiant. 
Here we have the service date and that's basically the day that I installed it. Although it is one year on. Let's take a look at test modes. Let's press the tick button. There we have check programs, electronic self test and actuator test. Press the tick again to enter. Now we're in check programs and that's basically the old P settings. Although they've done away with P2, which used to be the minimum output. So let's go back again. Then we got electronic self test. Now I don't want to break the boiler, so I'm definitely not going to press that at the moment. Actuator test, that's pretty straightforward. It just runs a three port valve backwards and forwards. So that's kind of useful to know to do that. But of course, if you just press the reset, that does exactly the same thing. Then we got the diagnostic codes, which are the D settings. I mentioned those briefly before. What they've improved here is they've actually written down what they all mean. So you don't have to go back to the book now. You can look through here and you know exactly what you are adjusting. So just in case you didn't know, D000, that adjusts the power of the central heating, the output that the boiler runs at. You can leave it on automatic as this one is, or you could adjust it right down to say 10 kilowatts or something. And then the central heating would only ever run at a maximum of 10 kilowatts. Obviously it still modulates down if it needs to, but it won't exceed that 10 kilowatts, hopefully making the boiler more efficient. This is a 36 kilowatt boiler, so the hot water would still run at that if it needs to. And like I said before, D40 and D41, your flow and return temperatures. Let's back out of there. Then we can scroll down to fault history. This is another one which I regularly look at. So whenever I come to do a service, I generally check the fault history to see if there's been any fault codes between now and the time I last serviced it. Now here's a new menu, limp home history. So let's take a look at that. Now I'm not really sure what this is telling me because this is a couple of weeks after I installed it and I actually come back to film this. So I'm not sure why that's in there. It's kind of indicating there was a problem. It definitely says flame loss at minimum output. Hmm, interesting. But moving on to factory settings. Of course, that will reset the boiler back to all its factory settings. Could be useful if you've come to a boiler you've never seen before and it seems completely messed up. So now I've just backed out of installer level. I'm just going to show this last one, button lock. If you've not seen that before, pretty straightforward. You just press the tick if you want to lock the screen. You can see it says activated now. Now you can't do anything on the screen, but if you just press and hold it for three seconds, it then becomes unlocked again. And that is about it. Now this video has turned out to be a lot longer than I was thinking of. It was just going to be a quick video showing you that data overview in case you missed it like I had. But also playing around with those QR codes made me realize they were way more useful than I thought they were. Right, that's about it then. As usual, I do hope my video has been helpful to you. If it has, then again, give me that little bit of feedback. You can click on that, subscribe, all the bell, share it with your friends. And if you want to check out the boiler issues with insulation, click that video. And if you want to see the one about sensor room pure, click on that one. Bye for now. See you next time.